Who's the best and worst Wind Legendary in Fire Emblem Heroes? Well, there are so many horrible Wind Legendaries that you absolutely do not want to summon for. Today, we're ranking every single Wind Legendary so you can figure out who you definitely want to avoid, which units will age the best, and who is truly worth your precious, precious orbs. We're ranking everyone in modes like Arena, Summoner Duels, and Aether Raids today. And most importantly, how well they'll age against the meta in the potential far future. I gave more importance to how well they perform in Arena specifically though, because that's where you have to use Legendaries the most. I'm not factoring in Arena score, because I care more about what the unit can actually do. And let me know in the comments who's your pick for the best win Legendary, let's see what we agree and disagree on. I did put a high emphasis on support and debuff effects, because it's not only one of the few things that make a unit age the best, but since you're already running Legendaries in Arena anyways, you'd rather have them support the team in more ways than one. Although just because a unit debuffs your enemies, it doesn't automatically make them the best. Speaking of which, in last place we have Legendary Hrid. He has a horrible player phase, a horrible enemy phase, and he's also in a horrible archetype. He inflicts guard to the foe with the lowest res, and it splashes to other foes within two spaces. But other than a minor stat swing, I genuinely struggle to understand why I should care about Hrid. Guard itself isn't a bad effect but it's almost never an effect that makes or breaks the meta, when we have so many other broken debuffs or effects you can apply on your enemy instead. Not to mention that Anti-Guard and Tempo have only become more and more common with the rise of Speed Death and Speed Res Tempo 4, which infantry just love to use nowadays for access to 50% DR piercing. In this meta where you have special jumping and all of these other crazy ways to accelerate your specials, they're likely pre-charged by the time you face them anyways, and you'd rather prevent specials from going off in the first place with things like Scowl, rather than relying on things like Guard. And even ignoring that, the biggest issue is that he's a melee cav, a very questionable archetype to be in arena when the maps are filled with trenches that stop cavalry movement. And also, he is a sword cav in a season where there are two other sword calves you can run instead. Not to mention, every other sword cav they've made since 2018. Calling Hrit irrelevant would be putting it nicely. He cannot kill anything, you will die to everything, and other than inflicting guard, Hrit is dead weight in almost every single way. Hrit just sucks, and I guess it's genetic, because then we have his sister. Legendary Gunther is a horrible ranged calf who gives even less support than Hrit. She does absolutely nothing to support her team, and to be honest, she does absolutely nothing at all. Her weapon and preference skill might look like a lot, but it's just a complicated way of saying she gets a stat swing between her and her opponent. I know that Legendary Male Robin taught us that some stats are good, but his degree of stats is so much that you just can't ignore it, whereas Gunther's stat swing isn't really amounting to much of anything. And to be honest, she's only getting worse and worse as they make better ranged calves. Being a ranged calf is one of the most competitive archetypes, and I can't even say that she will be outclassed when she has already been outclassed by nearly hundreds of units. I genuinely had a hard time deciding between Hrid and Gunther on who was the worst, but both of these units are so bad that they aren't even worth the rent space in your head just thinking about it. Who you will pick will depend on if you value Hrid's ability to inflict guard while he's stuck in a bad archetype. Or if you value having a ranged calf that sucks in every single way, but you like ranged calves more than melee ones. Between the two, I think Hrid sucks just a little bit more, but I honestly don't even care when both of these units are so horrible and you absolutely do not want to summon for any of them. Next, we have Legendary Lin. I only put her above Gunthra and Hrid because I like her archetype as a ranged infantry more than I value Hrid as a melee calf. And... Her in-combat feud effect is more unique than anything Gunther could ever do. I'm not saying I love it, but at least it's... something. Otherwise though, Lin also just sucks, and you basically want to replace the entire kit and weapons on all of these guys. She gets a sweep effect against melee units when she outspeeds her opponent by 5, which sounds amazing at first, until you take one look at her speed stat and you realize she's absolutely never ever gonna do that at all. You can have a plus 10 Lin with max dragon flowers and a floret and get 49 speed. For comparison, fallen female Byleth gets 47 speed just out of the box alone, and it's a safe bet that you will not get this sweep off. There's no way she was going to outspeed these monsters before, but especially not now after the speed creep jump that happened in book 7. So her sweep effect is non-existent, and the only other thing she has going for her is the feud effect I mentioned earlier, which is good against, I guess, just fallen Maria. But Maria's already making her way out of the meta, and considering Lin has absolutely nothing else to offer, she cannot do anything, she will die to everything, and you definitely don't want to summon for her either. Then, we have Legendary Makaya. 
She is one of the worst design units I've ever seen in this game, and it's embarrassing that she finds herself this low in E tier. Her kit makes absolutely no sense. She has a conditional desperation too, where she needs to be under 50% HP, which I personally hate, because unless you're running just Wings of Mercy strategies, you'd almost always prefer your units to have more HP than less. And notice I say she has desperation too, and not the desperation effect, because she really does need to be under 50% HP just to get it, which is worse than the condition for desperation 3. She has a preference assist, but this is one of the most unimpactful assists in the entire game, when all it does is convert penalties into bonuses while healing the ally and lessening Makaya's own HP. I'm guessing that's how you're supposed to get Makaya's desperation too, but even then, she has a weapon designed for player phase, not enemy phase, and she also only gets a guaranteed follow-up when she initiates. And then she has damage reduction only when she initiates or when the foe is ranged, by the way, which is so weird, because if you're already using her at low HP, you're decreasing your chances at surviving anyway, and I highly doubt 30% DR would even matter at that point. You're stuck deciding between whether you want her to attack or use her assist, and it feels like she has to take double the amount of actions just to get anything going, which is not only horrible from an action economy standpoint, but also outright stupid when we've had units that can get like 20 effects and better damage reduction just by breathing. And also, her speed stat is what I call monkey in the middle, where it's so middling that you can't do enough to try to stack it, but it's also not low enough to ignore, and you'd rather have that BST just go to other stats instead. I think Micaiah sucks on a multitude of levels. Infantry mages are already very competitive and arguably questionable. You want to replace her entire kit, and even if you did, her weapon just sucks and makes no sense. I only put her here because maybe you'd want to convert your allies' penalties into bonuses, but the fact that it takes up a whole action makes it so bad, and otherwise, she's outright useless. And, say it with me now, she cannot do anything, she will die to everything, unless she gets a refine that makes her broken. She will stay as one of the worst win legendaries in the entire game. These four units are so horrible that I can't even recommend replacing their kid with arcanes. Do not summon for these guys, and I can't even put them into D tier in good conscience. Into E tier they go. Next, we have Legendary Lucina, aka a glorified swap bot. Some of you might be surprised that I put her this low, and to be honest, I was too at first. Her father is one of the best units in the game with his assist skill, while Lucina's effects from swapping is so underwhelming that it is eclipsed by every other support in the game, and when you think of support units nowadays, absolutely no one is thinking of Legendary Lucina. Her preference assist skill gives her a guaranteed follow-up attack to her and her swapped ally, which is so irrelevant when everyone is running null follow-up. Even if you wanted offensive positioning, you literally have Soaring Guidance or a certain other win legendary, and if you wanted defensive positioning, you have yet another win legendary that can do it better than Lucina ever could. Don't get me wrong, a preference swap can be amazing, it's just that Future Vision 2 isn't. While swap isn't the worst, it's far from the same tier as reposition, and I'd much rather have it do so much more to make up for it. But at least her preference swap is what saved her from E tier, and I don't see her getting any worse, but I really don't see her getting any better. Her support is so useless, and other than just having the ability to run swap in arena, there's absolutely nothing unique that makes Lucina good. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but she cannot kill anything, she will die to everything, and I cannot ever recommend running Legendary Lucina. Next, we have Legendary Sigurd. If you told someone in Book 5 that this Sigurd would be this low, they would call you crazy. This guy definitely broke the meta, he arguably jump-started power creep by several years, we have an entire AR structure because of him, and he's living proof that IS doesn't know how to design their own game. You can actually tell how old he is just by looking at his preference B skill, which is so irrelevant and it feels like it's 7 years old, because it is, but otherwise, he gets a guaranteed follow-up attack and some conditional damage reduction. Sigurd is a great example of how an effect can become so valued in the meta, yet become so devalued later, when we get something even better and easier to use instead. Or in other words, why Guidance is so stupidly broken. Back in Book 5, giving your team plus one movement sounds like the most broken thing on the planet, and that's because it was. At the time, it was the best and such an unprecedented way to increase the threat range of your team, and every additional increase in range makes such an insane difference when the maps are so small. But nowadays, you'd much rather have Guidance support when it not only feels like so much more movement than plus one move, but it's also more flexible and effective. And that's actually why things like extra movement from Legendary Sigurd, T Sigurd, the Azuras, or even Duo Dogger's Pathfinder has fallen off, when all of these effects are only active for one turn. Whereas Guidance is not only active passively all the time, but you also just move so much further. And the bigger issue is that even if you wanted plus one movement, you literally have so many better ways to get it, like from T Sigurd or just anyone else instead. I will say that I actually like him more than other sword calves, because he can always move one extra space, and his support is far from useless. Plus, he has the potential to get even better with his future refine. But his offenses and defenses just suck, and he will die on anything that sneezes.
seizes on him, so he's been reduced to a kamikaze unit that will grant plus one movement for one turn before he dies. Even though calves are getting better in the meta, it's a tall order to fix his kit offensively. And defensively, calves are one of the worst archetypes in the game anyways, and I'd much rather run T Sigurd instead, who himself isn't even that meta relevant. I only see Sigurd getting worse and worse as we have better and easier ways to support the team with movement, and as they make more and more sword calves, that's why I put him down here. Both Lucina and Sigurd don't do a lot, and they're not at all good, but at least it's something, which is more than all of the clowns in E tier, and that's why they're going right here. Next, we have legendary female Byleth. She neutralizes guard because she just hates Frit, I guess, and she also gives herself null follow-up. But the main thing making her unique is her ability to warp around and give her allies drive tempo. But the biggest issue is that she's in one of the most competitive archetypes to be in this game, and I'd honestly rather run someone who's an even better nuke than her, or someone that can give even more support. And as things are right now, she's not really that good at either. She's able to move around quite a bit with her order's mobility, and if this were a few years ago, I would have put her higher on that alone. But with the stupid insanity that is Guidance 4, everyone can move even better than Legendary Female Byleth, and now she doesn't really have a lot going for her. She's only up here due to her unique ability to give drive tempo, which is one of, if not the only ways to outsource tempo to your allies, and how much you value female Byleth will depend on how much you value tempo as a whole. I wouldn't call tempo a bad effect, and it's actually a really good one that can make or break it for many units, but in my opinion, most units who want tempo already have it in their weapons. The ones who don't want tempo aren't exactly going to break the meta if they get it, and there's plenty of units that are perfectly fine with not having tempo anyways. For all of those reasons, I'm not that fond of female Byleth. I can see the arguments for switching Byleth and Sigurd around if you value plus one movement more than you value drive tempo, but I like Byleth slightly more because you have so many other ways to get extra movement, while there's basically no other ways to outsource tempo. I don't really see her getting that much worse, assuming she remains the only way to outsource tempo to your allies, but I don't really see her getting better either, as they keep making better infantry nukes that can support. Even though her support is good and unique, it doesn't necessarily make it meta relevant, and that's why I put her down here. Then we have Legendary Elliewood. I know it's crazy you put him this low when he was one of the best supports in the game, but power creep has come so far, and he's starting to show his age even after his refine. At the time, his support was one of the best supports in the game, but now we've gotten better support units and units that can contribute to the team in bigger and different ways. He gives map-wide bonus doubler, null panic, and canto 1 to the ally with the highest attack, which is pretty good, but how much you value Eliwood will depend on how much you value the specific support he gives. I actually think that bonus doubler is just an okay effect now. Nobody would say that getting in-combat stats is useless, but you have this one other legendary that can give your team even more stats to multiple allies, and that's not even mentioning that they're both getting worse and worse in the meta, as ploy becomes more and more common. Then, Null Panic isn't horrible, but I don't really like it because it requires your opponent to actively inflict something on you to get any benefit, and otherwise it's doing nothing for you. And I'd rather have effects that not only do more, but I'd also rather be in control of my own buffs and when they activate, rather than needing to rely on my opponent, though it does have great synergy with Bonus Doubler, and that's definitely why they gave it to him. And lastly, Kanto 1 is amazing, and that's actually why I like him better than Young Eliwood. But there's easier ways to get it as a support, and you can even give it to your whole team, not just one ally. I'm not calling Eliwood a bad support, but compared to the power creep today, it can feel very restrictive and he can only support one ally instead of the whole team, unless you want to coordinate everyone's attack stat. Nowadays, he's become a glorified smite bot that sits around and does nothing because his offenses and his defenses are so horrible, and I'd much rather have a unit that can be so much better offensively and as a support. He was great when raid bosses were at the top of the meta, but now that they've fallen off, his support has become even less relevant. And even when raid bosses do come back into the meta, knowing IS will definitely have more and better units that can give more support than Ellie would over here, and that's why I only see him getting worse and worse. Next, we have Legendary Mer aka just a sitting source of anti-warping and absolutely nothing else. She gets a follow-up denial and a guaranteed follow-up attack, but the only thing you actually care about is her ability to be Gatekeeper Jr. The biggest issue though is that it takes up her C skill, when you'd much rather have her run Soaring Guidance instead. She did get a little bit better with new skills like Counter Roar, Scowl, and she enjoys the Distant Counter Dragon Seal, but her preference weapon just sucks, and she can't run the best skill that makes Flyer so good. And outside of her anti-warping, she offers absolutely nothing as a support, 
support. She cannot kill anything, and she will die to almost everything. Mur is just a worse flying gatekeeper, because gatekeeper does anti-warping, while also providing so much other effects. And otherwise, Mur is so unimpactful that I struggle to think what to even say about her. Maybe you'd want to run her for a single team comp in SDS, but team slots are the most competitive thing in summoner duels, and I'd much rather just let my opponent warp and slot in literally any other unit that can benefit my team more than Mur. Because otherwise, there is no good reason to run her when you have better flyers, better dragons, and better ways to stop warping. I can see the arguments for swapping Mur and Eliwood, depending on what support you like better, but to be honest, they're both not that good. In my mind, she only edged out Eliwood because she's still the only other way to passively stop warping, other than Gatekeeper. And at least her support is more unique than whatever Eliwood does, but the moment they make a better source of anti-warping, she's going straight into C tier, and I only see her getting worse and worse. All of these guys give supports that are situational at best and outright irrelevant at worst, but at least their support is unique and is enough to feel some tangible impact to the team, and that's why they're going into C tier. Then we have Legendary Veronica. It's crazy how she used to be the absolute best win Legendary, so it's interesting to see just how the mighty have fallen. To me, she's one of the earliest examples of what I call the if unit initiates combat, enemy unit disintegrates immediately, age we found ourselves in today. She gets offensive no follow up, a full desperation effect, and if you somehow didn't die to that, she also gets a freaking sweep effect while also piercing your DR with a 2 cooldown special that she gets down to 1 with her slang. By the end of book 6, how in the world were you supposed to survive that? But the biggest issue for her now is actually the crazy speed creep spike of book 7, and everyone else outspeeding her. She suffered a lot when she relies on her speed to take advantage of her desperation, and having the ability to make a follow-up before your opponent can counter-attack just doesn't matter if you can't make a follow-up at all. Not to mention just how much more common and valuable Null C Disrupt has become, meaning even her sweep effect might not go off. Ultimately, it's getting harder and harder for her to kill things in an age where the newest nukes today simply don't struggle like she does. I will say that she enjoys calves getting better in the meta with skills like Insight, Trace 4, and Flared Mirror. So she's not exactly useless, but as Deer Piercing becomes more common through support, skills, other preference specials, and even specials you can inherit, her preference special isn't really making her unique anymore. She's just a ranged nuke with no support, and she's certainly not a bad one at all. But as they keep making better ranged nukes, one of the most popular archetypes in the game, she's only getting worse and worse, and that's why I put her down here. Then we have Legendary Female Corrin. She was definitely one of the worst units in the game and worst win legendaries before her refine, due to her archetype and inability to do, well, uh, anything. But now, she has special acceleration on crack, special cooldown charge plus one per attack, flat DR, 7 HP healing, she nullifies guard because she also hates Frid, she gets true damage, and she has 40% non-pierceable DR from her special. She's built around tanking, looping, and retaliating with her negating fang, a pretty great preference special, and as a unit, I actually like her quite a bit. If you wanted an infantry tank, I would argue she's one of, if not the very best at it, and outside of maybe just sweep effects, you'd better hope to outspeed her, or decelerate her special somehow, or else you're stuck fighting this monster you just can't kill. But I do have some serious doubts about her archetype as a whole and how much value you'd really get from running an infantry tank and that's actually why i put her here don't get me wrong i wouldn't call her a bad unit but in such a crazy player phase meta infantry tanks and arguably tanks in general are just not that valuable of a role when everyone dies to everything it's a big ask to warrant carrying tanks around and that's kind of why she's awkward in the meta and you might not want to run Corrin based on her archetype alone i was debating whether or not she's better than veronica and it honestly depends on who you value more do you value a unit who's outclassed in a given role, but the role itself is very useful? Or do you value someone who's amazing at the role, but the role itself isn't really that good? In the end, I liked Corrin just a little bit more, because if one day Omni tanks rise back up in the meta, then you have your Corrin as an amazing option ready to go. She's the best at what she does, which you'd enjoy in case her role becomes more valuable in the potential future, as opposed to Veronica, who's already been outclassed as a mage calf that pierces damage reduction. And that's why I put her down here. Both of these units are very usable and useful today, but Veronica's showing her age while only getting worse, and Corrin is a defensive tank trapped in a crazy player face meta, so I can't put these guys any higher than B tier. Next, we have Legendary Yuri. With his plus one movement, he has the threat range of a ranged cavalry unit while suffering none of the downsides because he's an infantry unit while also having access to all the amazing skills infantry can use. It's interesting that on release, you'd have a hard time arguing Yuri was better than Veronica, but as Speed Creep took her down, his staying power actually comes from his preference positional assist, Foul Play, a three space swap which is Loki insane and you can only get it from this Yuri in Arena if you care about your scoring. And also, he's only gotten better since he came out with skills like Speed Def 
Up Tempo 4 and Disarm Trap 4. But the biggest issue is his offensive power and his role as a hit and run unit, as he's been outclassed in both, and he will only continue to be outclassed as power creep gets crazier and crazier. I still think he's a great AoE nuker option, since he has offensive no follow up, and most importantly, true damage even with AoE specials. But he's getting outclassed there too, and it's made even worse that his preference skill is in his C slot, meaning he can't even run Times Pulse or Pulse Up Blades. And other than neutralizing Stall, which is only relevant in Summoner Duels, I can't recommend him as the best hit and run or AoE nuker. That being said, I'm actually valuing him more as a support unit. He will always be valuable with foul play, which gives him amazing offensive and defensive positioning support, not to mention his Kanto 2, which makes him amazing at moving both him and his teammates away from danger. Having both foul play and Kanto 2 makes playing with Yuri and using him to move your teammates one of the most versatile, effective, and creative things you can do in this game. While the Kroms can emulate something similar, nobody does defensive positioning better than Yuri, and that alone makes him amazing. While he's in A tier now, I can see him moving down a bit as his kill power is only getting worse and worse, but I don't think he'll truly be legendary crit bad due to how useful and unique foul play is, and that's why I put him here. Yuri is an amazing unit, and foul play will keep him useful for quite a while, but he doesn't really break the meta or win season, and that's why he goes in A tier. Now, in S tier, we have no one, because this unit is so insanely good that putting them in just one tier above Yuri cannot explain how good they are. I don't understand why the power levels between the best and worst win legendaries are so absurd. This unit is so insanely broken, they stand alone in their own tier as not only the best win legendary, but one of the best units in the entire game. In S plus tier, we have Legendary Alincia. She's one of the best units to come out of Book 7, and she's arguably the best flyer in the game in an age where flyers are the best unit type. I struggled to mention exactly what she can do, when it would be easier to mention what she can't do. She has the best effect in the game, Unconditional Brave on both player phase and enemy phase. She neutralizes Guard as some sick joke just to put Hrid even further into the grave. She comes with Kanto too, because why not just give it to her? She grants herself and her allies full no follow up regardless of the unit type, and most importantly, she comes with the most broken skill in the game, Guidance 5. What were they thinking? She can warp all of your units, even the calves and armors, and gives them insane mobility so good that it makes T-Sigurd look like a joke, and it's outright embarrassing for skills like Rain Snap, Grey Waves, or any other unit that tries to support the team with mobility, knowing they just can't do it as well as Legendary Alincia. She has the best offensive positioning in the game when she lets ranged units kill you from 6 tiles away, and she can take care of defensive positioning all by herself when she can rally or reposition someone and get away with Kanto 2. How well she'll age will depend on how IS handles anti-warping in the meta. But I'm actually not that big of a fan of the Grass Divine Vein or Ratatouille, because she has to move and actually commit to attacking something just to get anything up. And unless you're running just Gatekeeper, you're forced to waste actions or skills to actively combat her warping. And that's things you could have allocated to other buffs and effects. Whereas Alincia and every other flyer passively enables their warping because they weren't going to run anything else in their C slot anyways. I can see how warping got hurt in AR, but you already have so many other options in AR anyways. And the real issue is that warping is still as prevalent as ever in Arena, Summoner Duels, and basically every other mode. And in Arena specifically, Ratatouille doesn't even matter because you're always going to use Alencia on your player face and you can kill Ratatouille and take advantage of your warping before she can even move or blink. Unless they make a duo Summer Gatekeeper with the most broken anti-warping effects, or until they make anti-warping an effect that doesn't take up a lot of space in the skill economy. I really don't see warping being that hard countered in the meta. And even if she ages, she's still a source of no follow-up and a flying brave attacker that can pierce damage reduction and even run other C skills like Deadly Miasma. I genuinely wonder what in the world were they thinking when sometimes they make legendary Guinevere and sometimes they do this. And I will eat my words the day Alencia becomes as bad as legendary Hrid. But until then, Legendary Alencia is and will be the absolute best win legendary and one of the most impactful units they've ever put in this game. Alencia stands alone in S plus tier as the queen of win season and it's not even close. But even though I think she'll age really well, I don't think she'll age as well as this other unit who I talked about in my water legendary tier list. Did you enjoy the video? Only if you did, then drop a like and subscribe, comment below what you agreed and disagreed with, and I'll see you all real soon.